senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer. I'm an editor at Charisma Magazine. I've written a whole lot of books that you probably need to read, but I'm talking today about something I've never spoken about before. You need to hear this word. You need to beware the modern-day Pharisees who defy essential Bible truths. Now, here's the thing. I was reading in the Bible the other day. You all should read your Bible, praise God, in Acts chapter 23. And it occurred to me as I read the words of Paul as he was making his defense uh, before the council and that we often talk about the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees are religious demons. We, we speak of Pharisees, uh, uh, we talk about them as ones who have a religious spirit. If you've got a religious spirit, praise God, I bind you in Jesus' name. You've got to go, you've got to flee, you've got to receive an understanding of the Spirit of God because the letter kills and the law, the law kills, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. We often speak about the Pharisees, those religious spirits, but the Lord's been speaking to me about the Sadducees. We don't hear a whole lot about them in the Bible. We see them here, there, uh, now and again. Uh, we see more about the Pharisees, but let me talk to you about the Sadducees. You know, here's the thing. We get a glimpse of this here in Acts 23. I want to read this to you. Acts 23, starting at verse 6. Then Paul, knowing that one sect were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, cried out among the Sanhedrin. He said, brothers, I am a Pharisee. Now we know that he was a Pharisee. He had a religious spirit at some point. He was persecuting the church till he had this encounter with the Lord on the road to Damascus. Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why do thou persecute me? He said, it's hard for you to kick against the goads. And he had an experience, an encounter with God that rocked his world. It knocked him off his high horse. He became blind and then suddenly he could see, praise God, when Ananias came and laid hands on him. Listen, it changed his life. He was a Pharisee. And being a Pharisee, a former Pharisee, a, a delivered Pharisee, praise God, he determined and he understood the Sadducees. Now here's what he said. He said, I am being judged for the hope in the resurrection of the dead. Praise God. He said, I'm being judged for the hope of the resurrection of the dead. And when he said this, dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It was like two different uh, sort of, say, say, denominations is what we would liken them unto today. Different denominations who are arguing and fighting about what the Bible says. Are there gifts today? Are, are there apostles today? Are there prophets today? Well, this one says yes, and this one says no. It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. Kind of sounds like the body of Christ today, doesn't it? We're divided over things that have nothing to do with salvation. We want to fight and war about when Jesus is coming back. Your pre-trip, or your mid-trip, or your post-trip, or your no-trip. Oh, it's rubbish. It's foolishness. We ought not to fight about things that are not a matter of salvation. We should allow one another to believe according to the conviction of our hearts. He said the assembly was divided. Listen, for the Sadducees, now here's what I want to get to. Listen carefully. For the Sadducees, Sadducees, I can't even pronounce it because it's just so wicked, praise God. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit. See, I like to say they didn't believe in demons because they had demons, praise God. Sometimes when you are deceived, you don't know you are deceived. He said, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit. But the Pharisees acknowledge them all. So though the Pharisees were religious in nature, at least they believed that Jesus was coming. There was a resurrection from the dead. At least they believed in angels. At least they believed in demons. In the verse 9, there was a great outcry. The scribes that were from the sect of the Pharisees stood up and argued, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Now, that's the wisdom of God, and it's a great example of what the Bible says when it says, don't wonder in that day what you will say, because the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say in that hour. But the Holy Ghost gave him wisdom, but there's something more there. And there's something I want to expose here. There are, listen, there are Pharisees. We all know the Pharisees. They're religious spirits. But there are Sadducees in the modern-day church. They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They don't believe that there's angels. They don't believe that there's demons per se. 
They might believe it in their head. They might say, yes, scripture says there's angels. But if you tell them you had an encounter with an angel, oh, they'll say you're in heresy. If you say, well, there's a demon, they'll say, no, 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 Jesus dealt with all the demons. I beg to differ. Jesus said, occupy till I come. First Peter 5 and 8 says that the enemy is roaming about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Paul said in Corinthians that we are not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that there's this sect in the church, and they've got a Sadducee spirit. They don't believe. They might believe in the resurrection of the dead, but they don't believe in angels. They don't believe in spirits. In other words, they don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. They don't believe the Holy Spirit can heal. They don't believe the Holy Spirit can deliver. They just think all that stopped with the last apostle. They don't believe in apostles. They don't believe in prophets. Well, dear God, help me. What am I supposed to do with myself? Hallelujah. Exposes the, the Sadducees. The Sadducees were part of a Jewish sect. In the days of Jesus Christ, they denied the resurrection of the dead. They didn't believe in demons because they had demons. I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. The Sadducees, listen, they emphasized acceptance. Here's the bigger, here's the clincher. They emphasized acceptance of the written law alone. They didn't make no room for the Holy Ghost. It's like some of the churches that you might, you know what? Let me tell you something. If you're in a, a church that does not acknowledge the gifts of the spirits, honey, you need to get out in Jesus' name because it's dead. Here, let me read you a scripture. 2 Corinthians 3. Look, if you shun the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in your church, how do you think anybody's going to get saved? How do you think anybody's going to get healed? How is anybody going to get delivered when you won't let the Holy Ghost in? You want to treat the Holy Ghost, some of, some of these churches, like, like a drunk uncle. You want to hide him in the closet. Because sometimes people get under the Holy Ghost. They act a little drunk in the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? And when they got filled with the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, they said they, they, they thought they were drunk. Because they were staggering around. They were speaking in some other language. They said, we are not drunk as you suppose. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit has come upon us. Sometimes you just got to, you know, get a, little, get a little wild in the spirit. The Sadducees, it makes them gnash their teeth. They don't like it. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6. But our sufficiency is from God, listen, who has made us able ministers of the new covenant. See, some of these Sadducees, they've got this Old Testament mindset. They believe Jesus rose from the dead. But beyond that, it's all, it all faded. There's nothing more. I, my daughter one time, she was in a different state. I live in Florida. She grew up, she went off to another state. She went to a church. And this church was a, I won't tell you what denomination it is because I don't want to bash a denomination. That's not my heart here. I'm exposing a spirit. I'm exposing a thief that is robbing from the people of God. My daughter went to this church, and, and this woman there began to persecute her. Why? Because she had read my books, or she had seen, rather, she didn't bother to read it. She had seen that I'd written a book on Jezebel, Def The Spiritual Warrior's Guide to Defeating Jezebel. She saw that I believed in generational curses, in, in demons. She saw that I believed in angels. And she began to harass my 16-year-old daughter. Scandalous. Begin to persecute her. Begin to tell her that her mother was crazy because she believed in angels and demons. I said, you know what, Bridget, just cast that lunatic spirit off that woman because she's got a, a, not a religious nasty spirit. And I just said, just, just don't even pay attention to her. Just, 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 just cast it off. Cast it out in Jesus' name. But it hurt my daughter so badly, this Sadducee woman, that she did not go to church for many months. She did not want anything to do with church. Why? Because they persecuted her mother for believing what the word says. Some of you might have gone to a church and you, you were on fire for God and you came up under this uh, Sadducee pastor or these Sadducee boards, these Sadducee elders who wanted to tell you, you shouldn't believe that way. You shouldn't pray in tongues. My grandfather at one point when I first got saved, you know, he said, I, I, I'm glad you got saved, sweetheart, but I don't know about this praying in tongues thing. You know, what do you think about that? I think it's of the devil. Now, my grandfather eventually did change his mind, but at that time he said, I think it's of the devil. And, I, and then it scared me because I'm like, well, I'm praying in tongues like, you know, uh, I got the devil. And I didn't know. Some people will tell you, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got a devil. You know what that's called? Let me just tell you what it's called. I'm going to tell you bold today. I know it. I've been nice in my last few videos, but I'm mad about this Sadducee spirit. If when you say that the Holy Ghost is a devil, you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. We must be very careful. Jesus said, you know, the Father will forgive all these things you're saying about me. But not what you say against the Holy Ghost. So when you say it's a devil, when the Holy Spirit is moving and you want to say, it, oh, it's not good. We need, not to, we need to be very careful. He said, who, he who has made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Why? For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Here's the thing. We must be balanced 
in the Word and the Spirit. The Word and the Spirit agree. They agree. They always agree. But here's the thing. If we get off in the law, in the law of God, in the letter, in the Bible only, without the Spirit, we get very religious. We get crusty. We get legalistic. We come, become pharisaical and, and, and like Sadducees. But when we get off in the Spirit, we're not grounded in the Word. We get goofy. We become like a granola bar. We're like fruity, flaky, and nutty. We must find the balance. We must pursue the Word of God and the Spirit of God. So that we don't want to be Pharisees. We don't want to be Sadducees. Beware of the Sadducees in the modern-day church. Beware of the modern-day Sadducees. They don't believe in healing. They don't believe in miracles. They're like the ones Paul described. Here's the scripture I'm looking for. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Paul warning his spiritual son whom he loved, knowing that he would come across, come into, run into these sorts of people. He said, acknowledging or having, having a form of godliness. You know what a form of godliness is? You look good. You look the part. Praise God. Your face is shiny. You're wearing your church hat. Hallelujah. You say amen at all the right times. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And Paul told Timothy, from such, turn away. Turn away from those. Why? Because they will pollute your faith. They will erode your fervor. They will put out your fire. They will cause doubt and unbelief to come into your mind. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. From such, turn away. You're not going to convince them. Don't debate with them. Don't argue with them. It's not worth your time. Don't cast your pearls before the Sadducees. Don't cast your pearls before swine. A Sadducee mindset will rob us from encounters of God. Now, a few weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, I spoke to you about suddenlies, about suddenlies, about suddenlies, about encounters with God. The Sadducees will steal your faith. Some of you need an encounter with God. Those who came to the Awakening House of Prayer today, and, and those, of, those of you who watched the service online at www.ahop.tv, you got free. You got free in the Holy Ghost. Sadducees will try to rob your freedom. Sadducees will try to rob what God is doing in your life, try to rob you of those encounters with his heart, those suddenlies that I prophesied to you about. Now, I want to pray for you in just a minute. If you've got a Sadducee mindset, you need to get free. If you know a Sadducee in your life, you need to just maybe consider that alignment. Don't let them speak into your life, in other words. Some, don't go divorce your husband because he's a Sadducee. Now, that's not what I'm saying to you. I'm saying be careful not to let you know, the little leaven leavens the whole lump. Isn't that what Jesus said? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Don't let the leaven of the Pharisees get in your heart. Don't let the leaven of the Sadducees get in your heart. I want to pray for you in just a moment. I want to remind you I'm going to be in Europe. I'm doing a tour of Europe. Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, go on my website. Go on my website, jenniferleclair.org. Find the itinerary or email my office. I'm going to be with Sharon Stone in the UK. We've been doing prophetic mentoring, prophetic nights, all kinds of things. I can't even remember it all. Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, come see me. I was just in Singapore. I love you, Singapore. My heart was knit to the nation of Singapore. And listen, if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, you are welcome to do so. I always give you that opportunity. Why? Because you, you've been asking me. You can go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Many of you know that I am uh, producing a TV show that's going to go to three quarters of the world, every language, every nation where they speak, not just English. It's going to be translated into eight languages. Some of you might want to sow into that. Why? The nations need this kind of teaching. My first season of the, of the broadcast is called Your Prophetic Voice. The first season is going to be 13 episodes on the spirit of Jezebel. Y'all need to pray for me. Y'all need to pray for me. Go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate or paypal.me slash jenniferleclair. Paypal.me slash jenniferleclair. If you want to join my intercessory prayer army, go to prayforjennifer.com. Go to pray for Jennifer. I need your prayers. I just did this mass liver service, inner healing all weekend. I've never seen so much resistance in my life. And I know I've got over a thousand faithful intercessors. They're having dreams and visions about me. They're giving me prophetic words. I'm listening. I'm listening to you. Go to prayforjennifer.com. Sign up. We're having here in a couple of weeks, uh, praying the prodigals in. Praying the prodigals in. We're having another, uh, another event called Breaking in Jezebel Assignments and Alignments. You can find those at ahop.tv. You can find those coming up. Also, the School of Spiritual Warfare. You need to sign up for that. Why? Because you didn't know how to fight. Some of you are getting beat up. You're getting tormented. You're getting pressed down, oppressed. You need to learn how to fight. Many churches are not teaching spiritual warfare. 
or some are teaching errors like you can just go up into the second heaven whenever you want to praise god just take out leviathan up there don't fall for that stuff if the lord does not give you a word these are dangerous things people are teaching i want to teach you how to fight in a balanced way go to listen go to warfareschool.com it's real easy warfareschool.com right now there's early bird prices those early bird prices are going to expire i don't want you to send me hate mail because you didn't get i'm telling you now. you didn't tell me i'm telling you now warfareschool.com go warfareschool.com praise god let me pray for you father i thank you in the name of jesus that you give us a heart of flesh sensitive to your spirit lord let us not fall into this trap of being sadducees let us not fall into this pharisaical mindset this mindset that denies the power of your spirit that tries to, to steal others' faith by only meditating on the Word of God without acknowledging or allowing entrance to the Spirit of God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. I break and bind every Sadducee assignment over your life in the name of the Lord. There's somebody watching me, and it's like a light bulb just went on. The Lord's going to give you more revelation on this, and it's going to give you wisdom how to navigate this next season of your life. I just pray that you'll be filled with the Spirit, all of you watching me, Filled with the Spirit, overflowing, in Jesus' name. Listen, visit my website, jenniferleclair.org. If you want to come see me live in person, I'm often in South Florida. I won't be here this coming week. Be in London, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland. Be doing a radio broadcast there with my brother in Ireland. We're going to be visiting his studio, do a radio broadcast there. So if you're there, come see me. Find out where I am. Email my office. I hope to meet you in person. I love going to the nations and meeting all of you who follow so faithfully with the mornings and the Holy Spirit prayer calls. 6 a.m. Eastern Time, America Time, Periscope. I love you guys. I love you guys on Periscope. I'll be back with you soon. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.